Not many NBA players can fit the mold of Latrell Sprewell. Phenomenal athleticism, explosiveness and flashy style of play. A player who always left it all out on the court and was a fan favorite for wearing his emotions on his sleeve. I see him as an old school version of Russell Westbrook. People love to see players giving a damn, leaving their blood, sweat and tears on the court while producing highlight plays that are hard to believe. That's the main reason why Latrell Sprewell, despite all the ups and downs throughout his career, has a special place in the heart of many fans to this day. So let's check out a story. What up everybody, my name is Stefan and this is Heat Check. Let's get into it. The third seeded Golden State Warriors has lost in the first round of the 1992 playoffs to the Seattle Supersonics left a bitter taste in the mouth of Don Nelson's team. A summer of soul searching was awaiting the squad, led by Chris Mullen, Tim Hardaway and Sharunas Marcelonis, who had expected a longer postseason. Little did they know that management would select a gem with the 24th pick in the first round of the draft. In his second season at the University of Alabama, Sprewell had averaged almost 18 points, 5 rebounds and 2 assists per game. Atypical for a rookie on a winning team, Latrell had an immediate impact. Though the three most important Warriors, especially Mullen and Marcelones, missed a lot of games which opened up playing time and even many scoring opportunities for Sprewell, the fact remains that he made the most of the situation. Starting 69 of the 77 games he played in, his averages of 15.5 points, 3 Three and a half rebounds and four assists per game gave the dubs unexpected help, which unfortunately for them failed to result in a playoffs berth. Spree was also solid on defense with one and a half steals per game. At the end of that season, he was named to the all rookie second team. It was in the following season, however, when Spreewell truly announced himself to the league. Though Hardaway and Marcelones were injured the whole campaign, Spreewell, together with Mullen and rookie of the year Chris Weber, were the catalysts as the dubs ended with a 50 and 32 record. Latrell had a heck of a season, increasing his averages to 21 points, 5 rebounds, 4.5 assists and 2 steals per game. Playing and starting all 82 games, he even led the league in minutes per game with 43 per contest. The highlight of a season was against the New York Knicks. On February 10, 1994, he exploded for 41 and 6 boards while hitting 3 of 5 from deep and attacking the basket, which is why he shot 12 free throws, hitting 10. The league and those covering it took notice of his phenomenal season, naming him to the first team All-NBA together with the likes of Scottie Pippen, Karl Malone, Hakeem Olajuwon and John Stockton. This is one of the most underrated and unknown aspects of his career. His flashiness and explosive athleticism are the first things that come to mind when we talk about Luttrell, but apart from winning MVP, being first team All-NBA is the highest honor that a player can receive for his play in a season. That's how good he was that year. In fact, you see the great company that he's in. In addition to this, his first All-Star selection that season and being named also to the second team All-Defense were just the cherries on the top. At a team level, however, 1994-2 left Warriors fans wanting more. For all their regular season progress in the postseason, the Dubs were swept in the first round by Charles Barkley's Phoenix Suns. Following the loss to the Suns at an individual level, Sprewell's star continued to shine, at least in the next three seasons. Over that stretch, he continued to deliver, averaging 21.3 points, 4.5 rebounds and 5 assists, with 1.5 steals per contest, and another two All-Star selections in 95 and 97, acknowledging his efforts. The 96-97 is in fact the best statistical season of his career, when his scoring rose to as many as 24.2 points per game while his assists averaged increased to 6.3. That season saw perhaps the best all-around game of his career as well, when on January 21st he torched the Dallas Mavericks for 46 points, 10 assists, 6 boards and 5 steals. He was even feeling it from deep, with 6 3-pointers on 10 attempts. Though as a team, the dubs continued to struggle, missing out on the playoffs year after year after year. That streak would snap long after the end of Sprewell's time there, in 2007. Sadly, his playing days in the Bay Area cannot be discussed without mentioning some incidents, with the last of them making headlines all around the sports world. First, in his second season, Luttrell fought teammate Byron Houston despite the weight advantage of the power forward who had 50 pounds on Spree. Then in 1995, Spreewell, after a scrap with another teammate, this time it was Jerome Kersey, returned to practice with a wooden bat in his hands. According to reports, he threatened to return again with a gun. And lastly, on December 1st, 1999, coach PJ Carlissimo yelled at Spreewell to make crisper passes, to which the player responded by saying he wasn't in the mood 
salute for criticism. PJ, even though he'd been warned by Spree to keep his distance, approached. What happened next would go down in sports infamy. Latrell first threatened to kill him and then dragged him to the ground by the throat, keeping his hands there 10 to 15 seconds before teammates intervened. As if that wasn't enough, Spree returned to the court around 20 minutes after the incident and punched the coach and was once again dragged away. Commissioner David Stern issued an 82 game suspension, which was later reduced to 68 games. That cost Spree around $6.5 million, in addition to his Converse deal. Luttrell described the punishment as too harsh, saying he wasn't choking Carlissimo that hard, adding, quote, I mean, he could breathe. It was safe to say Luttrell would never appear in a Warriors uniform again. Then, in January of 1999, after his reinstatement, the Knicks traded for him. In the lockout shortened season, despite starting just 4 games and averaging 16.5 points, the Madison Square Garden embraced him as one of their own, loving his rebellious nature and emotional approach. The Knicks, thanks in part to his efforts, shocked the basketball world when, as an 8 seed, they made it all the way to the NBA Finals, a run that included a shocker against the number one seeded Miami Heat in the first round. A dramatic and fiery series that culminated in the deciding game 5 at the time with Allen Houston hitting the game winner. When all the emotions after that series settled, the Knicks then swept the Atlanta Hawks and won in 6 games in the conference finals against Indiana. Another series that had a memorable game winner, the Larry Johnson 4 point play. New York would go to the finals but without their injured star player Patrick Ewing, it was Spree who was the leading scorer for the team with 26 points per game. In the fifth game, his best one of the finals, Luttrell kept his team alive with 35 points and 10 boards, 25 of those points coming in the second half. The Spurs though with the twin towers of Tim Duncan, the finals MVP, and David Robinson with Greg Popovich at the helm were ultimately too much to handle. Despite the finals loss however, there was hope in the Big Apple. In the 1999-2000 season, Sprewell played all 82 games, increasing his scoring to 18 and a half. In the postseason, the third-seeded Knicks swept the Toronto Raptors, setting the stage for yet another showdown with the Heat. This series too came down to the wire, with Jeff Van Gundy's men once again prevailing in the final game of the series, which was played in Florida. But while almost everyone in New York and all Knicks fans were making plans for another finals trip, Reggie Miller, Jalen Rose and company with Larry Bird as their coach were plotting their revenge. Revenge is exactly what they would get. The Pacers defeated their rivals, preventing a dream finals for TV broadcasters between the Knicks and the Lakers in 2000. Spree continued to be a fan favorite over the next three seasons in a Knicks uniform, averaging 18 points over that stretch and becoming an East All-Star in 2001. But the Knickerbockers would only make the playoffs that same year, where they lost the final game at MSG against a Vince Carter-led Raptors team. Despite the shortcomings when it comes to the postseason, Latrell continued to amaze the garden. Possibly the best example of that is when he went off for his career high 49 points against the Boston Celtics in 2002, a game in which he also had 7 rebounds. In the summer of 03, in a move criticized by almost everyone in New York, management decided to pull the plug on the Spreewell experience. But dig deeper, you could at least try to see why they did it. A New York Times article about the trade says Spreewell, quote, often found himself at odds with management and team ownership for his tardiness and unreliability. Ending up in Minnesota, Spree was at least on a playoff team. So when the 2003-2004 season started, the Timberwolves took off, led by the season MVP Kevin Garnett, Sam Cassell and Sprewell. In his return to the Garden in a Timberwolves uniform in a typical revenge game, Latrell had 31, including a 3 that gave his team a 5 point lead with 1.14 to go. After the 3, he turned to James Dolan, the Knicks owner, and to put it mildly, a stream of curses was the result. In the 04 playoffs, Luttrell once again showed what he was capable of, putting up a 34, 7 and 6 in a crucial Game 5 win against the Sacramento Kings to put his team up 3-2. The Wolves had overcome the Denver Nuggets without a lot of problems in the first round. Unfortunately though for the big tickets, Spree and Sam, they ran into the Lakers, who had added Carl Malone and Gary Payton to an already impressive group that had Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal, with Phil Jackson as the head coach. Though Spree averaged almost 21 points, 4 rebounds and 5 assists, the Wolves fail in 6. 
That summer, Spree once again drew the ire of the public when the Wolves offered them a three-year $21 million contract before the start of the season. Sprewell, who was due to make $14.5 million in the 04-05 season, labeled it insulting. He said, quote, why would I want to help them win a title? They're not doing anything for me. I'm at risk. I have a lot of risk here. I got a family to feed. Anything could happen. That season was a mess for the Wolves. Head coach Philip Saunders was fired. The Sprewell contract situation wasn't helping either. Despite winning 44 games, the team missed the playoffs. In the 05-06 season, many teams were interested in Spree according to some reports, but nothing ever came out of it partly due to money-related reasons. So Luttrell never played in the NBA again. Despite all of this, you'll be wrong if you choose to define Spree as the greedy player that once choked his coach. Make no mistake about it, Luttrell was a mercurial talent, a first-team All-NBA selection, the leading scorer on a finals team, and for a time, the player who had the garden on its feet every time he was on the court. Credit where credit is due. That's it for now. Subscribe and talk to you in the next one. Peace out.